layouts. Now, layouts are very important in desktop programming. Basically, layouts tell Java where to put the components in containers, such as JPanel, Content Pane. Layouts automatically position components within these containers. So every panel or container has a default layout. So if you set the layout to null, it means that no layout manager is assigned and the components can be put at specific XY coordinates. Now it's recommended to set the layout explicitly for clarity. Now, as you might imagine, Java has lots of layout managers. We will show the grid layout in this lecture. So the grid layout um, arranges components in a rectangular grid. It arranges components in cells, and then each cell has the same size. So components are placed in columns and rows and the container is divided into equally sized rectangles. So one component is placed in each rectangle. There's a beautiful simplicity about this, right? Look at that. The grid layout class takes two parameters that is column and row. So in our example, we create a frame and four J button components. And then we add these components into the frame. And then we pass a grid layout as a parameter to the set layout method of frame. And then these components are arranged in a grid layout with two rows and two columns that are the same size. The grid layout takes two parameters and creates a grid layout with a given number of rows and columns. Now, in addition to this, we can add two more parameters. We can initialize the vertical and horizontal gap between each of the rows and columns. So, why don't we make a graphical user interface application uh, for our example as to how to work with Swing? So, for this example, we will add some components into a frame, and there'll be panel, label, text field, and buttons. So, in the exercise project, just right-click on the source folder and select the new class, and specify the package name as swing, and the class name as swing example, and then just Select the checkbox for the main method. So now let's create a JFrame object by using the new keyword with my first GUI as the title. So we must import the JFrame class from the Java Swing library. A JFrame is the main window that we will use to display the components we want to show on the screen. So first, we must set a size for the window. So we can set the size of the window by setting the number of pixels. So the method setSize of JFrame allows us to say how many pixels wide and how many pixels long the window should be. And let's set the window 280 by 300 pixels. And then we create a JLabel object by using the new keyword with hello as our text. Now we'll also import the JLabel class And then we create a JText field object by using the new keyword with an empty string. And we'll also import the JText field class. So now let's create three J button objects with string texts. 
The first object is button 1. Second object is button two. And the last object is button three. And also import the J button class. So let's create a J panel object to add components into it. We also will import the JPanel class. So let's use the add method of the JPanel class to add components to the panel. And we add three buttons, label and text field that we created before into this panel. And We'll add this panel to the frame by using the add method of the JFrame class. And then finally, we will display the frame by using the show method. Okay, so let's, let's run the code. And you see the components right there on the frame. So now we can write a string text field in the text field object to make the display better. Okay, let's run the code again. Okay, so we can see all the components in the window. All the components are added respectively, like in a panel. So the first three buttons, and then the label, and then the text field, right? Also, we can resize the window by using the mouse. Um, we didn't put any restrictions in the code, but you can. 